All right. Hello, everyone. Happy Monday. Yeah, hi, everybody. Brian and I are here for our regular Monday noon Zoom um, to discuss today. We are discussing high blood pressure. Yeah. Okay. And how we can incorporate our Live Good products to help reduce um, high blood pr pressure as well as prevent high blood pressure. So high blood pressure is a major risk factor for heart disease. And one in, uh, I mean, one person dies every 33 seconds of heart disease. So About this is, minutes. yeah, this is, this is a, a big deal. Yeah. Um, over 30% of the world's population has high blood pressure mm -hmm. and high blood pressure is considered the number one modifiable risk factor for heart disease. That means we can change this guys. Oh, this, this does not have to be um, our situation. We don't need to have high blood pressure. Um, of course, there's many, many, many lifestyle factors that help prevent and reduce high blood pressure. Taking supplements is one of those um, lifestyle changes that we need to take part in. Um, and uh, Ryan will go into more detail about how our supplements can help, but there's many things in our supplements or single supplements like vitamin D that help reduce um, blood pressure or prevent. Uh, vitamin D, magnesium. I want to say that actually. I think magnesium is more specific to blood pressure than vitamin D. Well, no, I was saying just sp specific like whole oh, supplements sure, sure, because sure, there's okay. other things in our products that help. But I mean, magnesium and vitamin D stand alone as, as helping to um, prevent and uh, um, reduce blood pressure. So vitamin D, magnesium, potassium, which is in our um, essential aminos, B vitamins, the B vitamins, which are in the full B vitamin complex is in our multivitamin, CoQ10, fish oil, garlic, all in the factor four guys. Um, L-arginine, which is um, in our aminos as well. So I had already said the potassium in there and the L-arginine. Beetroot, grapeseed extract. We all know that's in our lovely beloved super reds. A uh, green tea, which is in our super greens. So all in all, this, what we have here actually, guys, is the ultimate wellness pack. Okay, because again, ultimate wellness, that's what we're striving for um, to help prevent and uh, rid our, our um, blood pressure. Um, other things that we can do, modifiable um, lifestyle changes, reduce stress, sleep, proper hydration, um, reduce body fat. I mean, I'm pretty sure if you went around and found majority of obese people, they would all have high blood pressure. Um, healthy diet, no smoking, limit alcohol. I, uh, years ago, I was working in the cardiac rehab. And this is obviously people that came in after a um, heart episode. So whether it be a heart attack, um, a, wow, what else? Stroke. Or, yeah, heart attack, stroke. I mean, yeah. any, any cardiovascular related um, episode, they come into the cardiac rehab. This is like, this is like the, the reactive side, not the preventative side. So something had already happened. Now we're working to make them stronger to go out into the real world. And hopefully hopefully this doesn't happen again. We're, we're teaching them prevention, how to eat properly, how to exercise properly, how to supplement properly. You know, the goal here is on the prevention side. We want to educate you guys on how to take care of your bodies and prevent this from happening. But one thing that was like a common denominator of every single patient in that cardiac rehab guys was high blood pressure. And it, it was kind of funny. Some people would say, oh, no, I don't have high blood pressure, but they're on blood pressure medication. Yes, you do have, have high blood pressure. It is controlled by medications. So our goal here is to help you prevent this high blood pressure. And if you do have it, let's get that blood pressure down. And Ryan is going to take it over and tell us how our... Yeah, I'll tell you. Okay. Yeah. So in my mind, though, we, we went into this. We weren't exactly sure how we would approach blood pressure. There's a lot of ways to think about it. So in my mind, I'm like, all right, let's do... Let's talk about atherosclerosis in the context of high blood pressure. Atherosclerosis is sort of the plaque buildup inside the blood vessels. It eventually leads to, you know, fragment breaks off, leads to a stroke, leads to a heart attack. Um, you know, and, and obviously Lisa touched on the prevalence of it. Obviously, we know it's a number one killer. It's extremely common. And there's a lot of things that we can do about it. The actual, the actual lifestyle modifications and the adjustments we can make can have a dramatic impact. Unlike some other things, like related to like when we get when we have our conversation about cholesterol, it's a little harder to to approach from the lifestyle side. But really, in blood pressure, you can make dramatic dramatic uh, change impact. Uh, for me, it's personal too. I mean, my father died of cardiac arrest, which is just like a sudden death event. Um, but he had years and years of risk factors that were building up. We watched it. Like he was an athlete at a young age. He was very involved in his community. He retired, and then he, he started a sedentary lifestyle. Was drinking way too much alcohol. 
who just really had poor, poor nutritional intake. And ultimately it started with, yeah, high blood pressure, of course, that was early. I mean, that was probably pretty early. Then we started, we saw atrial fibrillation. So which is a disruption of the, ab or an abnormal heart rhythm, right? Uh, and, and then ultimately it led up to and got to the point where it was just so bad um, that cardiac arrest ensued. So it's a, it's personal to me. It's, um, and, and I get emotional about it because I know how much of an impact we can have when we talk to people and let them know that, first of all, it's insidious for the most part, right? It's slow, it's gradual. It, and it, and when, it, when, when you do know about it, it can, can sometimes be kind of scary. It's, so being insidious in nature means that we need to do a better job of monitoring our blood pressure. We've got to get a handle of what our numbers are and what's normal. And that's a real important thing. So very quickly, normal blood pressure, less than 120 over 80, okay? When you get a blood pressure monitor, you can go online, 40 bucks. You can get a blood pressure monitor. You can watch a video uh, and learn how proper technique really matters because it can have a lot of variability and it can temp tends to over overstate your blood pressure. But less than 120 over 80. Then there's stage one and stage two hypertension. If you want to know those numbers, please feel free to email me. I'll go back and forth and help you understand what those are. But first things first, get a handle of what your blood pressure is uh, and then go from there. And then we can talk about lifestyle. So we'll, that's what we're going to do today. We're going to talk a little bit about, we're going to focus on blood pressure. Um, obviously, there are some factors that, that other factors that go into atherosclerosis. You know, we talked about, um, you talked about um, cholesterol a little bit maybe, but it's, it's uh, high apro lipo lipoprotein B, that's a cholesterol, and then smoking. We're not even going to touch on smoking. We assume that it, you're not smoking. And if you are smoking, you know you should not be smoking. We're not going to go there. So today's focus is on blood pressure. In my mind, and most, and the prevailing literature says that blood pressure is a uh, endothelium, is a disease of the endothelium. What is the endothelium? It's the inside lining of our blood vessel. And you know what happens there most of all? Nitric oxide production. And that's a big factor, a huge factor. So you see it, um, obviously, with, when people get uh, overweight due to smoke, whatever the, whatever the factors are, they see a decrease in nitric oxide. So we, wanted to, we want to address that. Um, lots of other lifestyle factors go into it. Let me take a look and see some of the things. Um, and of course, look, the blood pressure, blood pressure affects other things. This is something I want to mention. So I was looking for a minute. Blood pressure can affect obviously the heart, right? We know that. And then the four, it's going to affect the, we can, it can affect the brain as well. So there's a lot of correlations. There's a lot of strong links between high blood pressure and diabetes. There's a lot of strong links between high blood pressure and cognitive decline and early stage of Alzheimer's. So getting a hold of this blood pressure and early and managing it properly, either with lifestyle modifications or medications, and that's okay. That's, there's a time and place for, for medications. And guys, keep something in mind. There is, pre, there is genetic predisposition to high blood pressure. It is not strictly a lifestyle disease. At some time, sometimes the genetics just overcome, and ultimately medications would probably be appropriate for those patients, or if they have other things going on that are contributing. But yeah, generally speaking, um, lifestyle is, is first and foremost. Right. And like you said, for those people that have diabetes and have heart disease, like I uh, explained in the cardiac rehab, and have uh, Alzheimer's dementia, they all have, again, that same common denominator is that that high blood pressure. And a lot of times it, it starts there. And, and we're not recognizing these red signs, these red flags that, okay, something is starting to go down in my body. And if we don't address it, the next thing, keep, things keep happening. The next thing comes and then boom, full-blown heart attack, stroke, whatever it is. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and like I said, it's insidious, right? So people go many, many, many years of, and it's, it tends to be an age-related disease. You don't really see a high incidence of blood, high blood pressure in people in their 20s and 30s. When you hit the middle ages between 45 and 55, an increase in incidence, of course, and that's the time when you really need to start, like, well, not that time, but hopefully you know sooner and you're watching your trends. And that's it. That's key. Let's watch your trends, address it early, stay ahead of it. And if it gets out of control, you have to immediately seek and make probably, I'd say, more like extreme adjustment and change of lifestyle than you probably would if you were watching it, watching the trend of it from an earlier age. Right. So, so going through the supplements, though. Yeah. And I think Lisa said that supplements is definitely part of it because it's lifestyle. So. Assuming that lifestyle can have, a, have an impact, we're going to have to just say that it's probably related to obesity or overweight, mm -hmm. I, I, right? I'm, we're going we're gonna to point at that and say that's probably the most, and, and with that being said, it's probably sarcopenia, which is like a low muscle mass condition. So the way we were approaching it is thinking, okay, let's address nutrient deficiencies. Let's assume people are overweight or obese, because in, just in the United States of America, we're talking about like almost three-fourths, right? Almost 75% of the population is either 
overweight or obese. I mean, so definitely addressing um, weight is, is, a, is part of that. And we've done a different Zoom on, on healthy weight loss and healthy weight management. But addressing nutrient deficiencies, that's why you'll see the foundation as part of this. So you'll have a men's multivitamin and women's multivitamin. There's thing, the B vitamins that can adjust the microvas microvascular, small blood vessels, and things that can help the kidney as well. I mean, when you talk about the kidney, it's a huge job. I mean, it really does filter a lot of your blood volume. It's crazy the job the kidney performs in such a small gland. Um, and then, of course, we have magnesium. And we know magnesium is involved in blood pressure. It's used in the hospital setting for women that are pregnant and have high blood pressure, preeclampsia. It's, it's involved in the um, membrane, the cellular membrane potential, which means it helps manage and properly conduct nerve, like the muscle contraction and conduction across the cells. And then we have vitamin D in there. And like Lisa said about the factor four, that's not part of our foundation, but we have it here because it's so incredibly beneficial, um, assuming too that the, the, the fish oil in it is beneficial for lowering high triglycerides, which we know, again, it's, a, one of the, it's another one of the lipids, another one of the cholesterols that we look at um to yeah 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 of course and there's coq10 in the form of ubiquinol and then garlic and so it's a great great supplement for more for inflammation but we know that heart disease is an inflammatory process right like we love to say it. ben certainly loves to mention it, that most most if not all chronic disease starts with inflammation like out of control uh persistently elevated inflammation and then of course like i just said if, assuming we're overweight and possibly sarcopenic so low muscle mass we know for sure it's a fact. I mean, you can just look at it from athletes and how the, the incidence of blood pressure, but muscle mass does a much better job. It's way more efficient in fat mass. And that's the concept. That's the mindset. And we all believe, Lisa and I really believe that most people consume, do not consume enough protein. So you'll see really two things here. You'll see the essential amino acids, which we have two flavors of, and then you'll see the, 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 um, the, the plant-based, complete plant-based protein, which is, uses a fermented pea protein, and an organic hemp seed protein, because that is what we want you to do to help build and, and increase your protein intake so that it can help maintain and build lean muscle mass. Mm -hmm. Help with the burning, burning the fat mass. Burning the fat mass. If, as you increase lean muscle mass, your resting metabolic rate also increases, thereby burning more calories at rest and ultimately, hopefully, burning more fat. Um, but don't, pay the, don't let the scale dictate everything. Sometimes it's misleading. All right, sure. and what are we going into next? Well, powerhouse of our super reds. Okay. Yeah, of course. So like I mentioned earlier, we know that smoking is a huge risk factor. And why is that? Because it damages the endothelium. Well, over time, high blood pressure also damages the endothelium. And what we're seeing is that when that damage occurs, then you're not making as much nitric oxide. So nitric oxide is a signaling molecule that causes your blood vessels to open up. It basically causes yeah. them to dilate, which allows the blood pressure to lower and the blood to flow more freely. So in here is, uh, is packed with dietary nitrates. Those dietary nitrates are the basis of other pharmaceutical options. Like they use nitroglycerin for people who have angina or chest pain. They have um, nitroglycerin or they have uh, uh, nitrate-based blood pressure medication. It works on the nitric oxide pathway. As a matter of fact, Viagra was developed um, originally trying to study it for blood pressure and realized that, they, that obviously they're having for a long time or uh, sexual side effects that they, that they developed it for. But either way, it works on the nitrate pathway. So when you put in here beetroot, you have, um, or, and by the way, it's all USDA certified organic, USDA certified organic beetroot, grapeseed extract, aronia berry, hawthorn berry, I mean, loaded, loaded with dietary nitrates, which have been shown to be very beneficial in formulated in, um, <clears throat> excuse me, in the nitric oxide pathway. So... Yes, that's a good thing. Yeah, awesome, awesome heart healthy supplement, and this can be taken more than one time a day as well. So yeah, I get oh that yeah, question a lot. No, I'm, I'm actually drinking it right now, and it it's delicious. I mean, I drink it by itself. There's no need to. I mean, I don't think there is a need to blend it in a smoothie, but right. a lot of people do. Sure. All right, and what's and then we had the super greens, the organic USDA certified organic super greens. This goes a lot. These both go along the lines of. Um, loading the body with antioxidants because again going back to another discussion we had i think it was on the super reds when we really got into the detail about what reactive oxygen species are Th those are the free radicals those are the things that antioxidants are gobbling up and you don't want a lot of free radicals free radicals like as an example what happened if you say didn't get enough sleep say you're out and just got a lot of sunburn or you were up late and and consuming too much alcohol a lot of these insults can cause a lot of free exercise actually believe it or not can do it too but a lot of free radicals, we just don't want those in our body. That can be the beginning of the cascade of inflammation inside the arteries and the blood vessels. 
So loaded with antioxidants and the greens, nutrient density is, is, is what we were going for. There's superfoods in here, and superfood is a whatever term, but just describes the fact that these are having a, 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 uh, uh, abnormally high amount of nutrients. And then the green tea. And, and the green tea, tea. yep, the green tea, yep, absolutely. Um, so there's a lot of really beneficial, there's ashwagandha in here, and there's a lot of really, really beneficial ingredients. Yeah, I love the super greens. I mix this also by myself, just by itself in water. So kind of that's, that's sort of the premise. Now, we're assuming that you need antioxidants to help balance out any reactive oxygen species. You want to build lean muscle mass and replace, replace that, that fat mass with lean muscle mass. And then, of course, you need to cover your foundation, your nutrient base, uh, like I call your insurance policy. So good way to approach it. Um, there's going to be more things that will probably add to this as time goes on. I would probably, this is mostly considered the ultimate wellness pack. Right. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But it is cool. besides you can have the addition of, of coffee. Yeah. Um, yeah. And like you said, there, there'll be other things that are going to go into all ultimate wellness pack, but you'll hear, um, or I, I get this, I get uh, questions a lot of the email. Um, and I commonly say the ultimate wellness pack, what do you recommend for this? The ultimate wellness pack. And I explain why, but really, cause this is about health and wellness guys. This is about mm -hmm. prevention. Um, these are the things that all of our bodies need to help ourselves stay healthy or get healthy and, and stay healthy. So if I had to seriously pick literally just focus on heart health and blood pressure, I'd probably go factor four mag and super reds. I mean, of, if I were literally just to say like those three, right. but as a package, I agree. Absolutely. That's why we put it up here. Yeah. All right, let's take a few questions. Lisa. Can you tap on that and see what, sorry, if it shot, move the screen. Yeah, there's, Lifestyle stuff, we didn't touch on sleep, we didn't touch on exercise, it's definitely for a different, another time. Yeah, we will cover all this stuff, um, but, you know, one topic um, for a Monday, but those things, sleep, anxiety, and all that does contribute to um, high blood pressure. Uh, low blood pressure. Yeah, low blood pressure you typically see with people that are on medication, right? If they, if they start med with... Um, uh, too high of a dose of something, right? That brings up another point. Like when you make it to that stage where you go on medication, some docs will start you on too high of a dose. And if you get that, like say orthostatic hypotension, or there's another phrase for it too. But yeah, you want to monitor your blood pressure. If you're seeing numbers too low and you're feeling that faintness and that dizziness and lightheadedness, then yes, you're probably over medicated. Or if you're not on medication and just have low blood pressure. Yeah, then look, what is. At what stage does that become an issue? Um, Hydrate, electrolytes, yeah. um, you know, that, that can always help. And if you don't feel bad, then, you know, it's not really a concern. It's more having low blood pressure where you can, <laughs> um, more low blood pressure, <clears throat> excuse me, where you can, um, sorry, I'm trying to talk and read at the same time. Yeah. Okay. But with medication too, I'll, I'll mention this and then I'll let you all go. It, it, medication do, uh, drug induced nutrient depletion is a real issue. It's a real thing. And I see that a lot because mostly the first line, first, one of the top first line prescribed um, medications for blood pressure is a thiazide diuretic. And that, bot, and that, that is known for dropping out magnesium, uh, and potassium. Right. So, you're so you've got to be, you, it's, it's a double edged sword. You've got to be very mindful of the medications you're on and the nutrient depletion that is caused as a result of that medication. So, right. keep that in mind if you're on hydrochlorothiazide or uh, diarrheal, any of the, the, the thiazide diuretics, be, be mindful of that. Right. So. And it's, you know, obviously stay on your medications for your doctor's order, but it's, mm -hmm. we've had several, um, uh, customers send uh, testimonials about their blood pressure going down and down and down and the medications being decreased, decreased. Yeah. And the end goal is guys getting yeah, off the sure. medication. Maybe you get there. Yeah. yeah. So, and if not, at least you can lower the dose and manage your blood pressure very right. tightly. But guys, reminder, this is, is so important. Measure your blood pressure at home. You can't rush to your, your physician appointment, your doctor appointment, be late, run up the stairs, hurry in, be stressed out, sit there and get right. one blood pressure reading right. and go, oh. The first thing they do when you, you get know. to their office is take your blood pressure. I think about it every time. I'm like, my heart's racing. Yeah. I just like, did all this. Of course, it's going to be a little higher. So please, please, please. I mean, for 40 bucks online, automatic meter and learn how to use it properly. And I think you'll get a better idea what your average blood pressure is. And that's important. Yep. Very, um, very important, guys. So look, high blood pressure is the number one 
uh, leading contributing factor to cardiovascular disease, which is heart attack and strokes, is the number one killer in the world. And, and it is very, um, you can be easily manipulated with lifestyle modifications. Yep. So please, guys, pay attention. Do what you can. Take care of yourself. Yeah, take care of yourself. Yeah. Okay, All awesome. Right. All right, y'all have a wonderful, you. wonderful, super productive rest of your day. We'll see you next time. Take care.